Hey guys, how's it going? Today, I've got something kind of exciting. This is a lathe I picked up a few weeks ago and I finally got it running here. Um, it's just sitting in my garage on my trailer yet because it probably weighs, I don't know, 13, 1400 pounds and I haven't uh, figured out a way to lift it yet. But anyways, this is a Grizzly model DF 1237G. So it's a 12 inch swing and a 37 inch between centers and then it also has a gap bed option to do uh, I believe up to 16 inch swing in the gap. Uh, this lathe was, this particular one was made about 1985 and I made some modifications to it because the guy that had it before me uh, made a few modifications to it so I had to remodify it. This lathe currently has a three-phase motor on it. It originally came with a single-phase 220, and since I didn't want to rewire it because I wasn't quite sure how to rewire it back to 220, I just decided to go with a VFD, so that's what I got now. So let me show you that. Um, it's just temporarily wired. And I'll show you first off, here's my trailer full of crap. Here's the old click clack relay box that used to be in there. These are the reverse mechanisms. Um, these are kind of neat if you have if you don't know how they work. There's a, I forget the name of the guy, but there's a guy on YouTube that explains these really well. But for three phase, they, they click and clack back and forth on the switches and they reverse the motor. Uh, transformer, fuse, and a, and a thing there. but. So here's what I put on there. So this guy, don't mind my messy wiring, like I said, it's just temporary, but this is a Tico FM50, up to two horsepower, 220 volt in, three phase, up to 240 out, I believe. So, and then I got all my remote wiring hooked up there. So let's go over here and take a look. Don't mind my mess. It's out in my garage, I haven't had a chance to clean up yet here. Alright, so what I got going on here is, so here is the original control panel. Let's flip that out of the way. So how it's set up, this particular one, how it was set up originally, and this was before they, they put reverse switches on them. This was your off, this was your this was your forward, and this was your reverse button. It was just a button, like here's, here's the button that was there. If you just push it, it's a temporary switch, and it click clack those. Reverse pull, reverse, reverse the current on the, to reverse them. But anyways, what I did with my VFD is I put my little potentiometer switch here, and then my on off reverse switch there and this is this is just a kill switch to work with the old stuff I ordered a new emergency stop so when I get the new one in there and you hit it it'll kill everything and you won't be able to to run it but if I this switch now the way it was set up before if you hit it and hold it down it'll go but then it pops back up so so I gotta get rid of that Um, one of the nice things about this lathe is it does have the, I'll turn it on here, you can see it running. It does have the two bars on it so you can see we want to run the, first we got to put it in gear. So that's up, <coughs> up here, say so we'll go, we'll go forward. So now our, now our one lead screw is turning. And then we want to switch over, go over to the our other lead screw for a half nut. And then of course we can reverse it. Same thing, reverse that. And then if I want to just reverse it, I can just switch it down and reverse the motor too. <clears throat> so there's running, and of course I can crank it up. Crank it back down. I don't have my. They're shutting it off. I programmed my VFD to shut it off kind of slow and then turn it on 
a little bit faster, but I figured that's enough. This is a threaded chuck, so I don't want to spin that guy off. Um, it's got the quick change gears, and then it also comes with another set of gears where you can uh, switch out if you want to do metric threading. And right now, I believe, I haven't threaded anything on it, but it should be set up for just standard threading because the guy I bought it from did a lot of machine and tool work. Uh, he was the original owner, bought it in 1985, so, you know, for being a 30-year-old <coughs> lathe, it's in pretty good shape. Come look over here. Sorry for my shakiness. So I believe this is the, the tool post that it came with originally. This is just a four position. Um, he does have a stop on here that looks like something he might have made. Um, other than that, everything else on here is pretty stock. I mean, it's it's a nice little lathe. Um, and I'm really happy I got this, this uh, VFD on there. And I set the torque up up to 10 so it, you know, it's pretty good torque on it. So I'm not too worried about that. And then what I did with, you know, being that we got the VFD now, here I'll hold on and we'll move, we'll look up in the gearbox here. <clears throat> All right, so being that we got our VFD on here, So being that we got our VFD on here, all of our change belts and gears, I mean, this is how you would normally change it. You swing that guy and you move your belt or you do your back gear or whatever. So now that we got our, our VFD, I mean, we can crank it up or we can, you know, put it back down to basically nothing. See how slow we're going there. I don't know what that, maybe, 30 RPMs or something, and crank it down a little. There's the lowest it'll go. So that kind of negates our needing to change those gears all the time. Um, on this particular lathe, here's the bolt pin. You probably can't see it too well. You can kind of see it. But this unscrews. So to get that bolt pin out, you just unscrew it, and then it'll pop. You'll, you'll feel it let loose. Then we can double double check we're not out yet so there we go it popped so now we're loose we can pop our back gear in now we're in back gear so we can still with our VFD I mean if we're gonna do threading or whatever we can still crank it down and we can get our mechanical torque with our back gear versus trying to get our torque with our VFD um, so that's a nice feature and then of course reverse this reverse switch is so cool I'm, I'm just pumped about it so that's back gear, and then if we want to get her back in, we gotta. Here's the tricky part: trying to find it. There we go. So then you gotta kind of hold it in and screw it back in too, which is kind of a pain. I know you can't really see what I'm doing here, but make sure I'm in the. There we go. There we go. Kind of a pain to get back in. Not as nice as like the old Logans or South Bends or whatever. It's just a retention pin where you yank out and then you can push it back in. Um, sorry, I got the utility guys across the street are cleaning cleaning up yards from what they, they made a mess this last spring. So, <clears throat> so that's that. I mean, it's awesome because you know changing these belts is kind of a pain, and then. Uh, I have it set on, on this one because that seems to be the best setting for torque and speed. Um, if you want to go over to the next pulley, the, the middle one on this particular lathe, you can get quite a bit more speed but you lose a little bit of torque. <coughs> so that's that, of course. Um, let's see what else here. Not a whole heck of a lot here. I'll maybe set this camera up over to the side and try to turn a piece of metal and, and see how it turns here. So hang tight. All right, so let me try and take a, a quick cut here and we'll see hopefully my bit is set up in an okay position here. Speed it up a little bit. I actually gotta turn my bit here a little bit. Do a face cut in my 
I'm not quite on center here with this guy, but just because I don't have the right size shims, but. Of course, once I get to the middle here, it's not going to work very well. Is that cut pretty decent? Let me turn a little bit here. Let me try and cut again. Hopefully, it's not too shaky there with the camera. I can see it's moving a little bit, but let's try our power feed. Put it in gear. So it gets a little, uh, little noisier once you get the power feed on. slow now. So I'm going to zoom in a little. Call that good just for the hell of it. That made a pretty decent cut for my bit not being, you know, on center, but there we go. So there's the, the Grizzly 12 inch. I mean, it's, you know, I haven't cut a whole lot on it, but we'll see. I might, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with it. It's kind of tough to get a big machine like this down in my basement, so I'm not sure I'm gonna do that, but um, it's a nice machine. I got quite a bit of attachments with it. I got a uh, four jaw faceplate, steady rest follower, and a collet attachment, which is a nice option. And then it, the, there's a few random tools in that little toolbox there, but. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, it seems to be a nice machine. I mean, you know, it, it's not a not a high quality uh, U.S. made one, but the guy I talked to said it. You know, the guy I bought it from said it held fairly decent tolerances. So, um, you know, a nice little lathe, and they're not horribly expensive either. So, there you go. Uh, if you guys enjoyed that, please feel free to like it, comment, subscribe, share it. And feel free to comment. Let me know if you got any comments that you want to make or let me know or any questions. And uh, check out my other videos. I got a ton of other videos on machining, lays, millwork, and uh, you know, just random other stuff, gunsmithing. So until next time, stay safe, take her easy, and I'll see you later. Thank you.